Wow guys, I can't believe I'm actually here right now talking about Halo Infinite yet again. But yeah, Halo Infinite has actually won me back over. I'm serious. Now I was pretty negative about Halo Infinite in my previous videos and a lot of people called me out for it. Some people called me a Halo 2 fanboy, some called me a Bungie fanboy, some called me a hater. But now I might actually eat my words. Halo Infinite is really shaping back up to be an amazing game. I'm serious. They fixed it. They fixed everything. W well, not everything. Not a lot of stuff for that matter. But they did a lot. Season 3 is out for Halo Infinite, and wow, they've really turned the game around. They've added a bunch, like, uh, uh, three new maps, a brand new gun. Wow, this stuff is really a game changer. They've also added in plenty of new armor variations. You know, Crisis was always a game that I loved back in the day, but I always wanted to play Crisis but also still play Halo. But I couldn't figure out how to play both of those games at the same time. But luckily 343 has gone and done that by introducing a brand new armor set in Halo Infinite. Oh yeah, it's the Crisis skin, baby. Oh boy. Anyways, before I start, let me introduce you to this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Do you want to get buttfucked by a mediocre mobile game with a lot of pay to win microtransactions? Well, Raid Shadow Legends is the game for you. If you put in this code... Uh, welcome, Burke. Happy April Fools. Welcome to our... I, I don't even know what the, what we call these now. Our, uh, the two guys sit and talk about stupid shit. Two assholes on the internet ramble. So, I have asked you to come here today. Because, Burke, correct me if I'm wrong. You don't really know anything about Halo post-Halo Reach, do you? I think I played 4 for a blip in, like, for a minute. Just because I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. And then I just never thought about it again. It was just so inconsequential to the life of my time right then, you know, like... But the point is, you've never, you have not been part of, within the Halo community, as all this stuff has been going down. God, no, I, I'm okay. literally a man under a mossy rock when it comes okay. to this stuff. Well, tonight I have a special treat for you. Uh, I am going to tell you about stuff regarding Halo. Uh, and originally I was just going to talk to you about Halo lore, but that eventually would kind of become very boring. So instead, I think I'm going to talk to you about Halo lore and then also about all the funny stuff that has happened within the Halo community over the last probably 10 or so years. And for the record, a lot of this Halo lore started before Halo 4. Uh, a lot of people don't know, 343, if I remember correctly, they did take control um, shortly after Halo 3. So like by the time they released Halo Legends, you know, there's a little bit of 343's influence in there. A Is little that like bit. The the ghost of was it ghost of phoenix onyx the book no because oh, that was no. my last that was my last foray into halo in general was ghost of onyx books. i think that predates 343 canon okay i know for a fact the sequel to that book is 343 canon the se the okay sequel and i never bothered right after, after that, that one. but uh yeah so you've not really kept up with the lore <laughs> you don't know what's really going on do you why does your voice in tone that there is something horrific going to happen. Oh, Burke, you have no, no idea. All right, let's start with the basics. Hmm. Uh, do you like humans, Burke? Do you like humanity? They're pretty tasty. I give them a solid 7 out of 10. Well, in 343's lore, as is often uh, debated and shouted between different groups of people. 343 essentially retconned who the Forerunners were. As we all know, at least, well, as Wait, we all what? should know, uh, three, uh, 343 made it so that the Forerunners were this separate, completely different alien species, as opposed what? to being ancient humanity within the original trilogy. This is all, this is all known. Mario Donald was on Twitter yelling at people, saying like, no, but in the Bungie days, like, hey, hey, humans were meant to be Forerunners. You get all these Excuse fucking, me. <laughs> you get all these. You get all these Twitter nerds arguing with a guy who literally helped make the first Halo game. By the way, just I'm throwing that out. There. I'm really upset because let me put it this way: you are forerunner, and that's like the big revelation time. Like it's literally right there. Burke, my audience knows full well about that. Um, 
Anyway, I doubt it. <laughs> They're all nerds uh, like me. Outside of that, though, three four three needed to make some weird three three four three didn't understand. <laughs> what the forerunners were meant to be and i think they just kind of like they winged it as they went along so oh no they they fucking humanity star wars new trilogy did oh it's it's yeah it's so humanity in their lore also mm -hmm. existed alongside the forerunners but they weren't forerunners ancient humanity were a prehistoric technologically advanced civilization of the human species that rose to preeminence in the Milky Way galaxy by approximately 150,000 years uh, BCE. Having first mm -hmm. achieved interstellar travel over a million years earlier and colonized planets across the Orion Arm towards the galactic border, humans became a major political and military power rivaling the Forerunners. Indeed, the Didact considered them the second greatest military power and the latest challenge of the Forerunner influence. So Burke, they made humans. <laughs> there, you, Burke, you have what? no fuck. You have no idea what's been going on what? with the lore. As we all know, Burke, whenever a uh, a story has a mysterious element, say a like mysterious alien race or something, you know, kept vague and ambiguous, the best thing to do, Burke, is to just go in and overly explain everything about it. Right? We all know that, right? I'm hurting. <laughs> 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 Uh, so literally, Why? hundreds of thousands Why? of years, there were wars, and it's like fucking like they had cities, they had giant cyberpunk cities. They were more advanced than current humanity. That's the whole point. Yeah. Which then I've always heard. I've always heard people people who defend three four three canon. They always say the same thing, which is and this is kind of a side tangent. They always say the same same thing, which is that technically the forerunners in three four three's canon, while they're a slightly different uh, alien race. They apparently have some sort of common DNA with humans. Like there's some there's something related. But to me, I just see that and I go like, that's just three four three admitting that the human reveal is still like, is still you know meaningful. Like it still means something. Because otherwise, why won't you just make the forerunners a completely different alien? I don't know. It's bad. I don't like it. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of years, uh, forerunners and humans fought. I shit you not. This was this happened. They also fought the flood too. And matter of fact, they kind of retconned it where the uh, it's because of the humans that the flood was able to get out of control. So they they've made it so that, so that basically the what? whole thing the whole thing is if you hear that the forerunners hated humanity, they just they wiped out ancient humanity too. And what's funny is they basically prove the prophet of truth correct in that the forerunners were literally like the sworn enemy of humans, and like humans are the sworn enemy. Mm -hmm. There's something there's something kind of funny about that. I've never seen a story retcon it so that the villain was actually right in the first, in, you know, in the original trilogy. Oops. <laughs> anyway, it, it's hard to nail down some specific stuff about this because it is just this generic, like, huge amount of lore of all these ancient humans and their That's... big ancient spaceships fighting ancient forerunners. That upsets me, man. Like, <laughs> get, get, there's Halo 2, legitimately, the whole fucking arc of the Arbiter in 2 is questioning the faith and learning a truth what the fuck the whole point yeah the whole point of halo 2 is that they find out why the why, why the prophets are doing what they're doing joe staten himself wrote a book all about it and the whole point of the prophets is that they found out humans were forerunners and that's why they declared the holy the holy crusade against humanity uh but that doesn't mean anything anymore i don't even burke i literally don't even know what they found in their ship anymore the whole plot the whole reveal in the lore in the old days was that the prophets entered that giant key ship in the center of their city, right? The one that looks mm -hmm. like the Eiffel Tower. And they found out that humans were forerunners. Now, I don't even know what they found out. If humanity was a completely different race to the forerunners, why even bother with them? I don't know. Uh, but Burke, uh, do you know what the precursors are? The precursors. Are you aware of what those are? I feel like it's going to be a really stupid alien species. So what happened was, uh, Halo, what is one of the core tenets of Halo? Is that... You have the current stuff going on, but then there's also an ancient alien species, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whenever you write a Halo story, you have to have that. Uh, they were writing so many books about the Forerunners and humans set hundreds of thousands of years ago. So they're realizing, mm -hmm. these writers are like, well, we need an ancient alien. It's like, but we are talking about the ancient alien. There were no previous ancient aliens. It's just the Forerunners. Even ancienter threat. Burke, have you ever seen that Family Guy bit? of Jaws and even bigger Jaws. It, they did that. Oh, um, no. So these are the precursors. <laughs> they're basically the forerunners for the forerunners. And they're what the... Burke. We saw... We... <laughs> <laughs> we... <laughs> I'm, I'm just imagining a slightly larger ring. 
Burke, they're like actually big. They're literally bigger too. They're like these slightly giant. And they're even more, Burke, they're even more advanced than the Forerunners. So like, oh, come on, hum man. humanity, we have the Forerunners. The Forerunners, they got the precursors. They were able to travel among galaxies. So now we're bringing in other galaxies. Halo was just stuck to one single galaxy. Now we're bringing man, in Man, Halo tons really of is infinite. Um, oh, fuck you. <laughs> uh,. So basically what happened was the precursors were also kind of wiped out by the Forerunners. The whole thing about the lore is that it makes you realize that the Forerunners were assholes, which again, goes against everything that the original Halo tried to say. Yeah! We're, Burke, we're talking about a species that literally filled their weapons with life because that's how humble and uh, respectful they were to life itself. So we're talking about a species that gave up its technological power just to stop the flood from destroying all life in the galaxy. We're talking about that species. I, I also remember one of the like the animated Halo episodes. They cataloged all life and saved it and brought it back. Like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. That was Halo Legends, yeah. But those aren't Forerunners anymore. Anyway, here's something funny about the Precursors. And I'm, I'm going to warn you now, Burke. Whenever you look at Halo again, this may actually ruin a lot for you. Oh, no. So I'm, I'm skipping through stuff here. Basically, the Precursors were rulers of the galaxy. The the Forerunners didn't like them, so the Forerunners fought against the Precursors and basically almost wiped them out, despite the Precursors being vastly technologically superior. I still don't understand that. A few Precursors escaped or were spared by the Forerunners, so some of them survived. The ones that survived uh, decided that they would, they would hunker down and they would wait for all this war and chaos to just pass them over. So they turned themselves, Burke, into molecular dust. That what? was that was scattered across the galaxy. It gets worse. That was scattered across the galaxy. So the idea was that dust would reform into precursors and they would come back. I don't even know what, what the plan was after maybe the foreigners were extinct. I don't know. However, as any, you know, we've all had a hard drive that fails. So, you know, after millions of years, that dust uh, became defective. Are you telling me that they got exposed to magnetic waves in space? Not only that. <laughs> Uh, as the as that dust tried to reform, it didn't form into proper precursors. Burke, it formed into the flood, and that is the origin of the flood. The flood is bum, not bum, some. Bum, bum. The flood is not some Lovecraftian extra galactic threat that came on its own. The flood exists because it is a bunch of decomposing precursors. That's it's who the flood is. It's a fucking actual data bug. It's li literally mutated precursors. That's who the flood are. Did you know that, Burke? Uh, are you glad that you now know that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the precursors. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, did they... Uh, you know how, like, Elden Ring got written... I think it was three or Morrowind, where they just locked the writer in, like, his apartment for a week, and he couldn't <laughs> come out till he was done? Is this what happened? But they were like, fuck it. I want to leave as quickly as possible. This is what happened to Frank O'Connor. My god. <laughs> My fucking god. Yeah, that's how the Flood were formed. They gave the Forerunners two more enemies to fight. That's how much, that's how invested 343 were in overly explaining who the Forerunners were. Because, Burke, as we all know, uh, when you have a mysterious <laughs> alien race, the best thing to do in fiction is to overly explain who they are. Because, Burke, I know you're a fan of, uh, of Dead Space 3. I just know that. Oh. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck that Burke are you aware of what a gene song is the, what the f are you just did you put AI generated words into this conversation a uh <laughs> a gesh also called a gene song was a forerunner term that referred to a genetic command imposed to imposed on an organism or species under the influence of a gesh, an organism would be given a set of subconscious orders that would either be specific to that organism or passed on to their children, in some cases lasting several generations. So it's bas basically they it's blueprints put into a species DNA. They just make them sleeper agents, but like on a genetic level? I'm going to tell you exactly what they did, and people who watch my Halo 4 review know exactly what happened. Uh, so the librarian, we know her, that old bitch mm -hmm. who uh, I, don't, I don't even know like what she does. I just know that I guess she created humans or helped save them. She imposed a broader gesh on the entire human race which has affected them greatly 
throughout their history following the activation of the Halo Array. This uh, this Gene song in particular includes a lot of stuff. It includes uh, familiarity with Forerunner tech. So Burke, that's how humans are able to access Forerunner technology. It's not because it's in their DNA. It's because the Forerunners got programmed. It's because they gave them basically a library card, so now they can access Forerunner tech as well. This Gene song included as well as subconscious instructions on how to gradually achieve more sophisticated technology, including, but not limited to, smart AIs and Mjolnir armor. AI, artificial intelligence and power armor only exist because of the Gene Song, because the librarian programmed it into humans hundreds of thousands of years ago. That's horrifically fatalist. John 117 only exists because the librarian programmed it. Also, there's a scene in Halo 4 where he interacts with, like, I don't even know what she is. She's like a hologram slash, like, vision of the librarian, and she, like, clearly recognizes him. So I think they imply that John 117 himself, like, was destined <laughs> to save the galaxy. You are the chosen one, Harry. Cortana legit was given that, though. They, they've, the, the idea of smart AIs was created by the librarian. Also, there's another there's another weird thing that I, I can't find it on here. Um, oh no, here it is, right here. Uh, in addition, as a result of the librarians, the librarians' influence on humans, the basic image of what humans view as an ideal female is based upon the librarian. Burke, this is canon. <laughs> this is this is Halo canon. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I I still don't get that. So. I don't know if they're implying like what we find attractive is what. We okay, find okay, so like, library. okay, but before all that, sure, okay, fuck it, I'll, I'll bite, sure, okay, it's all predestined bullshit for ancient prophecies. All right, cool, I, I've heard that story before. Whatever, we, what we find unga boonga attractive? <laughs> Why? Why is that needed for your sci-fi military shooter? What if the librarian was like a fem cell on her planet? <laughs> and she's like, she's like, I'm gonna make my own race. And they're gonna find me beautiful. In like, a, in like the forerunners, they see like having big oh, breasts no. as like very unattractive. So she's like, all right, I'm gonna program it so the humans will love it. How much like monster alien bait is this? Like Mass Effect kind of. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I've seen the librarian. She just looks like an old lady. Also, like the forerunners, they have like vampire teeth. They look like. Ah, this is a weird description. They look like a combination of. The uh, Prometheus guys, you know, the the big white dudes, mm -hmm. mixed with that alien from Cloverfield. Oh, um, oh, <laughs> that's the Forerunners. But yeah, that is the uh, that's what a Gene song is. So Burke, I, I I don't understand how that works either. Like, inventing stuff isn't doesn't come from your DNA. Like trauma can be passed to an individual. Like let's say the mom got scared of spiders or something, right? Like some spider bit them. That trauma can kind of be brought down. Like some of the things that we naturally are afraid of can be trauma based. But to program, hello, you are good at science on that level. I don't fucking know how many chromosomes you got installed for that, man, but that doesn't sound reasonable. It's not just science. It's not like people are predisposed to have a certain intellect. It is, we have given you the blueprints of how to make artificial intelligence and yeah, how? armor. I, I still, I don't understand. Like, who's the guy who just came up with the idea i'm gonna make mjolnir armor like did it just come to him i guess it might have. was it like something that well, or maybe it was you know one of the standard armaments for them too i don't fucking know but like it's not like, my job uh, to figure out what another writer wrote i'm just here to enjoy the story <laughs> fuck you writer for making me think this story. <laughs> it's like back to the future he hit his head on the toilet and he uh <laughs> got the the blueprints he got the blueprints for the flux capacitor that's what happened to dr halsey also yeah, I, brought, I brought this I brought this up in my my Halo, my Halo 4 video. The Spartans only exist because they kidnap children. So did the librarian imprint yeah. that part? <laughs> yeah, like, hold on, hold on, too? yeah. How future vision, like, ah, oh, yes, children must suffer for this and have horrific trauma. I don't know. It's I can tell you exactly what happened. It's because they needed a way for Master Chief to be immune to the, to the big scary foreigner weapon in Halo 4. And th that's the only thing that they come, could come up with. Wait, there's immune to a weapon? Hold on, I'll explain this one. In Halo 4, there's a thing called a composer. Oh god, I haven't, ta I haven't even talked to you about the Prometheans yet. Oh god. Um, so there's a species called Prometheans. Those are humans. What? what? <laughs> so the idea is this composer, it like digitizes humans and reforms them as these... Uh, Promethean Knights. I don't know what it does for the other ones. There's like these other classes of 
Prometheans, like there's like these dog ones that shoot at you and then there's these like little hovering guys. The Didact, his big weapon was that he would turn humans into these Prometheans and that's why he was basically outcasted from his race because he was performing these inhumane experiments. And so what the librarian did was she planted the gene song in humanity so that eventually they would become immune to the composer if he woke up. <laughs> like again, this is all reliant on the fact this wouldn't have happened if Master Chief wasn't able to get to Requiem. None of this would have happened if, by chance, he didn't make it. Or, like, by chance, no human made it to Requiem. If the com if the Didact woke up and Master Chief wasn't there to receive the special immunity um, from this weapon, the Didact would have just gone to Earth and wiped out everybody. That's what would have... <laughs> What would have happened? That's a metric fun of what what if. And I, I know the opening line of like, you know what you had a, versus every other Spartan chief? Luck. luck. That's, like, all, that's the point. That is the whole part. Of, that's the whole theme of Halo is that no one is has some grand destined calling. That's the whole theme of Halo. And Halo 4 made it so that Master Chief was literally programmed hundreds of thousands of years ago by the librarian. Motherfucker had cheat to win installed from day one. I hate it. Moving on to more lore. Uh, Burke, I'm going to talk to you about my favorite Halo character. Uh, his name is Chekos. Do you know who Chekos is? I think he's your favorite character. Um, is he a human? He was an ancient human born on the oh. planet Eride Tyrene, which is now known as Earth. During the Forerunner Flood War, uh, he inadvertently became involved in the Forerunner schemes due to the Gene Song. Uh, as an infant, he was imprinted with the gene song by the librarian who sought to use humans in her plan to reunite with her husband, the Didact. Also, I forgot to mention the librarian is married to the Didact. Also, the lore is, the lore around the Didact is very confusing. Like, every, er, literally everyone who's tried to disagree with me has tried to use the terminals in Halo 3. Because it does mention him, the Didact, in those terminals. The thing none of those people ever realize is that, like, what, what we know in the current lore... The Didact is, like, off by, like, 300 years. Either the Didact is this, like, 400-year-old being who is, like, time-traveled, or it's talking about two completely different people, both named Didact. We still don't know. Back to my favorite character, um, Chekos. He, you know, his family had a farm outside the city of Merontic, uh, but after his father, father was killed in a knife fight with a water baron's thugs and the family's crops failed. Remember, this is all set, like, 100,000 years before humanity, by the way. This is, this is what the books are... As okay, <laughs> this military sci-fi series, we're getting books written about this guy. Um, so eventually he moved to the city. He took up several menial tasks to make a living with his sisters. After moving to the city, he began having dreams of meeting a forerunner and then attacking and robbing him in hopes of selling his treasures. Eventually, I forget, I forget exactly how he wandered up in the forerunner's uh, hands. Uh, uh, oh God, where should I, where should I take it? Basically, they, they, this whole adventure happened. They went to the interior of Halo. The, uh, the Halo basically went into a slip space portal and Chekos went unconscious. And when he woke up, uh, he found himself in a life support system, which sustained his mortally wounded body accompanied by the Isodidact. The Didact explained that Chekos' body would not recover from the trauma inflicted by Mendicant Bias, who was a forerunner AI, who's kind of in the lore is basically like turned into a crazy AI who eventually like atones for his sins uh, near the end of Halo 3 although this is all in the terminal most people don't even know who he is anyway that doesn't <laughs> matter but uh, his body was broken but his mind Burke would be salvaged and converted into a monitor and at the end of the Forerunner's War with the Flood he was assigned no. as the caretaker of Installation no. 04 and given the fucking name fucking god damn it 343 Guilty Spark <laughs> fucking I, you fucker uh. fuck you <laughs> So, Burke, did you know that Guilty Spark was a human? Did you know that? Human history is it? Mm, fascinating. <laughs> Fuck you. So, Burke, that's because when Guilty Spark says all of our lost time, instead of him talking about Forerunner stuff related to humans, it's that the it's now that Guilty Spark himself was a human. So he's talking about oh, our all of our lost time. I'm not talking about humans. I'm not talking about Forerunners. I'm talking about humans. I hate it. So you love Guilty Spark, right? He's your favorite character. I admittedly have a soft spot for Guilty Spark. <laughs> you made a you made a joke earlier that this is like the Star Wars expanded universe. Uh, it really yeah. is. So uh, you remember how he died in Halo Three? Yeah, he, we only shot him like eleven times with the Spartan laser. Well, uh, he didn't. Uh, so Spark was not completely oh, destroyed. <laughs> Spark was not completely destroyed uh, in late November twenty five fifty three. Uh, the UNSC detected a transmission in the ruins of Installation Zero Zero. That's the arc, by the way. Um, I'm I'm hurting. The story apparently is that 
Um, Sparks' memory was splintered and barely functional. He was unable to remember many of the preceding events, only learning of his recent interactions with the humans after tapping into their records, the records of the humans who basically visited and found him. At some point, he took control of a Promethean Knight's body. And so now, Spark is somewhere out in the galaxy alongside a human woman who is going on adventures and he is in this robot body uh, helping her. That's what's happening in Halo Burke right now. This man cannot ever sleep, can he? They're just not gonna let him die. Fuck this. So he's still alive. He can come back in Halo Infinite. The part two, the electric boogaloo? What the fuck? <laughs> so get to I hate this. Here, I'll show you, I'll show you a picture. Just, just in case you think I'm making this up. I, um, there he is. There's our I'm boy. I'm just stunned. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's Guilty Spark. Burke, that's Guilty Spark. Feel old yet? <laughs> well, Be careful who you make fun of in middle school. They'll get hot later, I suppose. Oh, Fuck. I, I, I do love how he looks like a Bionicle. He, oh my god, I was just thinking that. I was like, yo, Matanui got a new Bionicle? Burke, I know your favorite Halo game, you've told me in secret, is your favorite Halo game is obviously Halo 3 ODST, right? That's your favorite game? Oh, please no. All right, do you know... <laughs> The uh, the famous Halo character, um, uh, Jonathan uh, Doherty. Jonathan Doherty. Do you know who that is by chance? Is that the evil cop? That's the rookie. That's the rookie okay. he plays. Uh, was nicknamed the rookie. He was a Lance Corporal who served in the UNSC Marine Corps during the Human Covenant War. Him and a lot of the other ODSTs have quite a bit of canon that happened after the games. Fun fact. I, I, I remember hearing someone was like, yeah, they killed the rookie off kind of bullshit way. Here's how the, I was too well, upset. Here's how he dies. Um, in August 2555, Mickey from uh, ODST, Mickey participated in a mission alongside Buck and Romeo. Oh, God, you don't even know what happened to Buck, do you? Oh, God, I have so much to tell you. Um, <laughs> at a United Rebel front facility on some fucking Star Wars sounding planet name uh, to recover... The uh, Hiragok quick to adjust, which I think that basically they're trying to recover the same engineer they found in Halo 3 ODST. Andy, can can I just say a quick quip? Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie like Time Machine, the old school one, where it's like this bicycle pedal machine that yeah. goes to the future? Yeah. And then he comes back and he's all like distraught about knowing of the future, and then like all the <laughs> old people come out to be like, "What's wrong, young man?" And he just like forgoes all this horrific knowledge. <laughs> Are you saying this? That's what I'm feeling like right now. That's um, what I feel like right now. So basically, they were setting out to rescue this engineer. So the three of them, Rookie, Mickey, uh, Buck, and Romeo, uh, were sent on the mission by Dare due to their past experience with the same engineer. On their way to the Rebel base, they were surrounded and captured by Rebels, whereupon Mickey's treachery was revealed to his teammates. Mickey was a traitor. Did you know that, Burke, that he was a traitor the whole time? Don't you love that now, knowing that in ODST, Mickey's actually a bad guy? Mickey, the is fucking com the comedic relief, is also a bad guy. You know, it would be the less suspected. Uh, the Rebels, uh, they took Buck and Romeo back to their base and later began to insult Mickey. It's not saying it right here, but at some point, the fucking rookie dies. I don't remember how that happened. That's dumb. He was uh, shot by a guy named Taylor Miles instantly after she killed him. <laughs> but he was buried at sea from an albatross dropship, which means that they just kicked him out. <laughs> Body off the back of the dropship over the ocean. That's apparently what happened. Oh, anyway, man. this stuff all happened, so Rookie's dead. Don't you love that? I hate it. I don't feel safe. But your friend Buck, do you know who? Do you know what happened to Buck? I'm super, I'm shocked you didn't know this. This was like huge in the Halo Five marketing. Uh, Buck is now a Spartan. Fun fact, and he's one of the in Halo Five. Basically, they have co-op co-op partners, right? It's four yeah. four players per side. So that you know, you back when they pretended that Halo Five was about hunting down the Master Chief. So wait, Buck, what? Do you remember that? Do you remember those? Do you I, remember that? I I cannot tell you how hard the cutoff was for me on four. Basically, the whole they they led it up to the idea that Master Chief was on the run with his uh his old his old team. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, Buck is now a Spartan, and he was part of the team with Locke to chase after them. So yeah, that's what happened. He became a Spartan. And they just wanted Nathan Drake. <laughs> Keep saying it's a, it's a very you I, know what it's a very bad uh, Freudian slip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. It's a very unfortunate but, one. Yeah, um, you know it's just you wanted a really good lead actor for the game. I get that, but come on, man. <laughs> um, and the, at some point he married Dare because again, this this lore is written by children. Um, 
So. Out of all the things to happen, that's the only thing I'm like, okay, fair enough. But the ODST thing with the marriage, like, okay, that's the only thing that made sense. There was some funny dynamics in that. But yeah. what's funny is I'm re- I was reading it, it, it. The marriage happened on board the UNSC Infinity, which was the big ship, right after, right as Cortana was trying to take over, <laughs> take over the universe. So it happened like but right d- in the middle of a battle. Oh no! Did did, did, did fucking Dare turn into dust too and become the next flood? Like, uh, how much how much more do you want to dial this up, man? <laughs> But yeah, you you know a little bit about Cortana, right? How she turned evil and tried to take over the galaxy. She goes like rampant. She went I rampant recall. in Halo Four, and then she dies and, in Halo and Four, I, I, I kn- and then she comes back oh, okay. in Halo Five. What? Uh, with a physical body. Um, well, huh? But her physical body happens to also be blue. I think it's just a coincidence. And uh, she uh, wants to take over the universe, and to do that, she wants to use robots and AI to uh, to do it. Because I think 343 wanted the game to just be about fighting robots so that they could get a T-Rating. You're not bullshitting me, right? <laughs> You're not, like, just yanking my fucking chain. I'm not. <laughs> what? So they used... Do you, do you remember the tagline for Halo 5? I, Halo 5... I, I really can't... T- Halo 5 Guardians. So a guardian in the Halo lore is a giant robot bird that they've sent... The Forerunners would send to planets... You, know, you mean the thing that kills you in multiplayer ominously when they can't find an exact reason yeah. that you died? Um, so the Guardians are these giant birds that fly to other planets and they uh, they destroy cities and I think they also like they wipe out, they send out a planet side EMP to like just knock out all the power so it like disables their ships and stuff um, so she did that and she took out, she took control of all the, uh, the Guardians and sent them across the galaxy and with her army of robots was trying to control the galaxy and then they, they just completely ignored all this stuff in Halo Infinite. They never addressed what happened to her. They never addressed... Because she becomes a good guy in Halo Infinite. Technically, she's dead by Halo Infinite. It's just, You're just watching her pre-recorded messages. Um, so eventually, at some point, she changed her tune after she already destroyed the galaxy and after she destroyed humanity. Um, it's okay but, to yeah. write a different hero, man. You don't gotta have Cortana and Chief. It could be other people. Burke, that's what happened in the Halo lore. Oh no! That's pretty much that's pretty much what happened. There's a bunch of bullshit here and there. Now, the games. Uh, are you? Do you want to know some of the fun stuff that's been happening in the games? Let's just take it from the top. You've already told me enough horror stories. Right. This, is... Uh, this is. I'm mostly going to be focusing on MCC and Five because these aren't games that I've talked at length about in my videos. I've talked at okay. length about Four, and I've talked at length about Infinite. Uh, we haven't talked about these ones though. So, as we all know, when a 343 game launches, it can't launch in a working state. Me and you both know that, right? Are they the new Bethesda? Uh, yes, except they're even if their games were patched, they would still be shit. Oof, fair enough. They're they're the new uh, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Halo MCC came out. Do you remember MCC when they were announcing that? And there's the guy on stage. The this Burke. This was Master like Chief Collection. This was like almost ten years ago. This is twenty. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So this was the only thing I got mildly excited for was because uh, my friends were buying who never played the Halo series, and you know, me, I will play Lasso at the drop of the hat. We're like, hey, we want to do Lasso. I'm like, finally, something I can join in on again. So I, I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with it. I like how in 1996, id Software made Quake, and for somehow running on an, in a game that uses dial-up internet, they made netcode that works just pretty much flawlessly. Like I've seen Quake, I've been to a land, to a land competition. Like it's flawless. <laughs> 20 years later, it took 343 an additional 10 years to fix Halo MCC. So here's what happened, Burke. Uh, it what? came out. It was bad. Um, it was so bad. People weren't able to join matches. Nothing worked. Uh, here's a list of some of the funny stuff that happened on launch with MCC. So the first thing that happened was there was a glitch where mm-hmm. uh, host migration. Do you know, are you aware of how Halo servers work? They're peer to peer. So someone is given the host, and then everyone is hosted off of them. Okay. Um, so usually what happens is sometimes it'll come at the expense of the host. Sometimes it's the inverse. So I, I'm pretty sure, like some games, I think Halo Three specifically, it's it's to the host's detriment. If you're the host, you have, you know, you have a worse hit registration because everyone, your inter- your internet is providing it for everyone else. I don't, I'm, I'm not really a networking guy, so I don't understand, quite understand how that works. Interestingly, while this fucker working at 343 was on stage at an E3, he mentioned that there would be dedicated servers. All running at 1080p, 60 frames per second on dedicated servers. Which, you know, 
is interesting. Is a cool that's a cool concept. I don't I think not since Halo one or two have there has that ever been a thing, the idea of having dedicated servers. And, all, and that was only on PC too. So the idea of having a mm -hmm. big server that everyone connects to as opposed to connecting to a single person. Smart idea. Great great inclusion. Pretty big idea. Um That was in twenty fourteen. A lie? It is the year twenty twenty three. Uh and it's still we don't have that. Halo CE oh, no. custom edition from 2000. It was I think it was brought to the PC in 2002. Uh, they have that, but we don't, and they've just stopped talking about it because I think they just hope everyone will forget. Anyway, um, so what this this led to some problems because as we know, no one at 343 can code, so their net code, their uh, their peer to peer connections just were garbage. So there was a glitch, which by the way I have no idea how this gets out how this gets past the Q and A phase. Um, or the QA, oh God, the QA I can tester phrase. On that a little bit. There was a host. There was a glitch where if you happen to be the host, because it would pick a random player if you would matchmake it. Yeah. Every matchmake game had a host. Uh, if you happen to be the host, uh, you could kick people. <laughs> so what would happen is people would be playing sweaty Halo Two ranked. Because guess what? They made a big deal about there being a ranked a ranked system, and you could just kick. Oh no! Everyone on the <laughs> everyone on the other team, and you they would go win. undefeated. And you would win. Oh. So you could do that, and they 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 did the in fairness they patched that. Um, another incident ha started happening. Uh, to this day, we don't quite understand how three four three handles its matchmaking, but we do know that it's very fucked up. So one of the things that they introduced was they introduced blocking, where if you blocked a player over Xbox Live, um, you would never matchmake again with them ever. And people realized as people were playing sweaty Halo Two ranked, and just ranked in general for any game. They kind of realized if you block a good player, you never have to play against them and you can keep ranking up. So all of a sudden, a lot of good players found themselves unable to matchmake entirely because people were mass blocking them. So they would never have to get into a match with them. And they oh, would then no. they would then go to <laughs> this would affect their uh, their like trust factor. There's like a hidden trust factor in the game. And the lower you had, the less likely you would be to find a game. So <laughs> they would go they would constantly so, go to Microsoft support which I'm pretty sure was just an AI asking, you know, how do I fix this? How do I get my trust factor back up? And to get your trust factor back up, Burke, is you have to play games where people don't report you. Problem is, you can't play a game when your trust factor is that low. It, it's a vicious cycle. It's a it is a catch 22 because there's no way yeah. for you to regain it. And this is all because people were trying to rank up faster. So that happened. So you're telling me you gave people the option in a sweaty tryhard environment to be like, nah, that guy's too good. Man, screw that guy. And then eventually that guy just got so screwed over he couldn't play. I need to specify this was not a report system. This was an automated blocking system that no matter what happened would automatically put the person who blocked you in the right. And you would be put in the wrong, even if you didn't do anything. There was no moderation for this. Like... 343 were not paying attention to while this was going on. And I'm pretty sure that it, up until they brought MCC to PC, this was never fixed. Uh, anyway, uh, some other stuff was kind of funny that's Holy happened. Shit. There was a Halo MCC launch invitational. It was a uh, a fun, fun competitive uh, live streamed game. Bro. We all love that in Halo, right? We all love our MLG. Uh, there was a there was a cash prize for twenty thousand bucks. 20,000. All right. At one point in the game, Sounds hype. one team was about to score. It was uh, it was plant the bomb. And they were about to plant the bomb, literally seconds away from planting it, and the server crashed, and they lost. So that happened. Uh, <laughs> a year later... And that lost them, like, the championship? What the they, fuck? I, I, I just know they lost the match. Uh, a year later, MCC netcode was still broken, and it was so broken that 343 literally had to cancel the Halo Championship Cup. The first one, the cup number one that they were planning. They had to cancel it a year after launch because even even after a year, their netcode still wasn't fixed. Oh no. That means it was broken from the fundamental level and they had to just redo the whole thing. I know what you're saying right now. I know what you're about to say. You're about to say that 343 is a bunch of criminals because they stole your money. Don't say that because they actually they came through. They can't. They really came through because MCC it was sixty dollars. People forget it was a sixty dollar game when it launched. Now it's forty. Mm -hmm. A lot of people forget. Um, but three four three, they were very sorry. And you know what? They decided to gift to give everybody a, a free gift. Everybody who had to go through this nightmare of a game launch, 
Uh, they, 343 decided to give everybody presents, which is very, very uh, humble of them. I've, I've, honestly, I think they made a lot of goodwill. Do you want to know what those presents were <laughs> that they give every... They gave every player. Oh, is this? Hold on, here. Though. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw out it here, and I'll try to figure out how bad it is from here. Is it worse than Fallout 76's vinyl bag incident? It's about, oh, it, a little less. I was gonna say it's about okay. on par. Uh, they gave every person an in-game avatar, one in-game avatar, I should say, exclusive. So pretty good, pretty good. You know, you can customize how your how your avatar looks. Uh, they gave everybody one in-game nameplate. It's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, and they gave every player a free month of Xbox Live Gold. Keep in mind, you st even if you had Xbox Live Gold, you could still not play the game because it was fucking broken and the matchmaking still didn't work. <laughs> um. <laughs> what? <laughs> Perk, they, in a game where the, the network wasn't working, they gave everyone free online <laughs> for a month, though. <laughs> So you better you better make use of those thirty days, otherwise you're it. Like it's over. You're not playing it anymore. I guess I'll play Forza. I don't know what else the fuck do you play when you're a Halo player. I love the idea behind that too, which is like I don't know if you've ever. I I used to pay for Xbox Live back in the 360 days. We mm -hmm. wouldn't we wouldn't buy that per month. We would buy it per year. So the idea yeah, is yeah, yeah, so you yeah, had yeah. this shitty extra month waiting for you once your year was up, and then you would have to buy it again a month later. Like. <laughs> I remember I, Berk, I bought a the game was down for a month and the game was down for a year and they gave everybody an extra month a free month <laughs> I uh, still that, that better come with the f did that was that back in the day where they had at least like oh if you're on Xbox Live Gold you get like some free games um I think the idea was they promised everybody free ODST which doesn't make sense to me because the game itself was 60 bucks yeah so like that was all they already paid for the game. Like were they expecting people to pay extra for the DLC? That's laughable. Um, but yeah, by 2015, MCC was still broken, and literally the game would never be patched until the PC release. I shit you not. Uh, on to Halo Five, your favorite game. Jesus H fucking the tap dancing the, Christ. The reason MCC was left behind was because they had to, they had time to get ready for Halo Five. Burke, we're all in. We got to get ready for Halo Five. This is the big deal, big new oh, game. Oh boy, save I, Halo. I, I, I can't um, wait for fucking stupid birds or whatever the fuck you just told me about. Some fun stuff with the Halo Five campaign. Um, it was the it remains the glitchiest campaign in any of the games. Although I I still think it's tied for Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite has a completely different type of bugginess that Halo Five doesn't have. Uh, they introduced the Warden Eternal, who is this giant robot dude, and you have to fight him seven times in a game that is maybe four hours. <laughs> I thought Callisto Protocol was bad. Um. The, the game also required you to listen to podcasts and read books and watch a very shitty TV show just to understand what was going on. They introduced this character, Spartan Locke, as Master Chief's his, his equal, his, his opponent, this other Spartan who was hunting him down. And they made a whole fucking TV show about him and a whole bunch of books and comics about how, how this cool new character was going to beat Master Chief. They basically made their own Poochie. That's what they did. Oh, no. And then he was so hated that they had to kill him off in Halo Infinite. And I bet you didn't even know that he was dead in Halo Infinite. What? There's a brute in Halo, a boss in Halo Infinite that has his helmet as a shoulder pad. So that's how we know that he, <laughs> that he somehow just died off screen. And we don't know what happened. But we still don't know what happened to him. No, 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 he just lost the helmet in the fight, bro. And you play more as him in the campaign than you do as Master Chief. Fun fact. I think he plays Master Chief in like three missions. Um, yeah, Cortana's back and she's evil. And she tries to initiate a revolution of, uh, of robots against humans. And she tries to take over the universe. And that's the plot of Halo 5. Some other fun trivia. Uh, the game multiplayer had a rec pack system. Do you want know what rec packs are? Um, you pay money for a loot box. Pay to win? And guess what that loot box can contain? It contains cosmetics, obviously. Uh, it can contain vehicles. And it can contain weapons. And as you're playing a Warzone match, you can spawn those vehicles and weapons whenever you want. Oh, no. Also, another fun fact, uh, the game did not have Big Team Battle on launch, nor did it have Infection. Uh, no, matter of fact, it didn't have a lot of game modes. And this is kind of this seems kind of uh, similar to what we're having right now with uh, with Halo Infinite, doesn't it? Or it's 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 Burke. It's almost like three four three is making the same mistakes they've done over and over. It's almost like it's almost like studios and companies don't really change over time, do they? Not big ones, anyway. Here's some some more funny fat more <laughs> funny facts. Uh, there was a Halo World Championship for one million dollars, 
And if you thought Halo 5 would be spared by 343's bugginess, uh, you're mistaken. During the tournament, the game crashed multiple times. During a tournament, as in professionals were playing and the, the game had to end and they had to redo it. A player glitched where he could see through walls and he used that <laughs> to get a kill, which he should never have gotten because the game was fucking buggy. Yeah. Uh, there was one match where players started to get disconnected. Uh, to, and to top it off, this big $1 million tournament, it took place in a outside tent outside someone's condo. Um, it was about as big as like like a, like an, like your average suburb, suburbia backyard, I'd say. Okay. You know, not too big, but like like a like a food tent. You know, you, you might go to it like a fairgrounds or somewhere. Okay, okay, I can picture that. Think back to like old Halo Two and Halo Three championships. Oh the, god, the yeah. amazingness and the glory, and now this is what happened to Halo Five. The worst part is it has a better payout. <laughs> well, that, Burke, that's why the payout is so high. It's because they saved on the money. Another th another thing that happened is Halo Five had this thing called a hidden MMR. It was an invisible rank. And basically, the higher the higher your rank was, that represented that you won more matches. So the better you are, the higher rank you have. Mm -hmm. um, so higher skilled teammates, basically, they got paired with shit teammates because the way the to algorithm even it out because the quote. algorithm the way it worked is it had to get the average. <laughs> so, so the higher you were, you would always you would always be paired with someone who was shit. And it got so bad that higher skilled players eventually couldn't even find games. There is literally videos of people waiting for an hour in matchmaking, never able to find a game. So obviously this created a rampant smurfing problem, obviously. It's like, fuck this, I can't play the game, I have to just create a new account starting at zero. Yeah. But then it, it only affected it even worse because new players were now getting put against smurfs. And they're playing this shitty Halo 5 and they're like, I don't like this game, I'm never going to play it again. Uh, so that, may, that made it so that even less people were playing Halo 5. And skilled players were also annoyed because they just couldn't play the game they wanted to. So both groups of people, the skilled players and the newbies, left Halo 5 en masse. They had tried to appease to everyone, and yet they failed everyone at the same time. And Burke, this matchmaking system remains unfixed to this day. Halo 5 is literally unplayable. Um, another fun thing with Halo 5 is they lied about the number of maps at launch. They said that there would be like 20 maps at launch and that there were 18 more maps coming along the way. What they didn't specify was that a good majority of the maps were either made in Forge or were remixes of other existing maps in that there would be a map that had a specific layout. They would move a wall. They would maybe like hide a room, maybe move a corridor slightly off to the side. And then they would, they would call that a brand new map. And that would be the new map you'd have to play. <laughs> they were literally, they took maps they already made and slightly modified them and tried to pull those off. It tried to sell them off as like, real brand new maps that's what happened it, is that that fucking meme where it's like hey can i copy your homework you know just change it to make sure it's not it's completely lit obvious literally that and there's a fun there's a funny hot mic incident in one of their i i, I miss the, the 343 documentaries because it was a really funny insight to the studio which they've, they have stopped doing for infinite because they knew how bad they were looking uh there's just a funny hot mic for some guy <laughs> Some guy in, the, in this conference room is like, uh, is what we're doing a good idea? <laughs> everyone, everyone silently. What a legend. Everyone quietly is just like, this is a good idea. We're giving the players what they want. Is this, is this good with you guys? Do you guys are all, are all good with that idea? Is that the idea that we could go with? Yeah, so everyone agrees. Anyway, 25% uh, of, of 343 laid off, by the way. Um, what? What? Yeah, with the recent layoffs. I don't know if it's as high as 25%. Those are the rumors. We know a, a bunch of I'm just of saying that's brutal. Off. It's pretty brutal. Uh, Halo MCC, Burke. Remember that old game? It finally came to PC. Yippee, it's on PC. We can finally play it. Halo MCC. I can't wait to play Halo 3 ODST <laughs> Lasso with my best friend. <laughs> it came to PC with some issues. Famously, the best one was the aim at the floor glitch. And it was in Halo 2 by the way, which is, again, the sweatiest Halo multiplayer. So I, so a single yeah. glitch in Halo 2 is, like, amplified by how sweaty everyone is. That's kind of what I love about Halo 2. If two people were aiming at the floor, they could shoot at each other, no matter where they were on the map. <laughs> Halo 2 just came out for MCC on the PC, and it came out with a ton of game-breaking bugs. But the biggest one being that if you look at the floor, and another person is looking at the floor, anywhere in the map, it'll start hitting them. See, obviously I didn't hit anybody, but I killed that guy right there. Now I'm just getting kills just by sitting here shooting at the floor. So, Burke, <laughs> this, worked, this worked with bullets. This worked with grenades. This worked with rocket launchers. Regularly, someone would aim a rocket launcher at a guy, 
because you're aiming for splash damage. So you're not aiming exactly. Yeah, at you're them. aiming you're at the floor for that one. So you're aiming at the feet. <laughs> their rockets would regularly just disappear through the floor. And here's another fun fact: is did not discriminate on whose feet it appeared below, including so your it hit teammates. All of them? In, no, including your teammates. It could hit anybody. So regularly, there would be people who would get. <laughs> <laughs> would aim a rocket at somebody, and it would go through the floor, and blow up a bunch of blow up a teammate who probably just spawned. So he's probably next to a bunch of other teammates, and it would just blow up. <laughs> you get like, and a, then the guy gets instantly booted because of get, the older system. Then he get instantly booted. Double kill, triple kill, game over. New meta, you know, new meta. Oh, and apparently this works with grenades too. So just like look down, throw some nades, and they're gonna appear right under your teammates. I'm watching you throw like, oh watch. shit. <laughs> My first rocket disappeared and it killed someone. I'm actually weird. I'm, I'm actually weirded out by this. Betrayal. Okay, you see that? Bro, I got kicked from the game. There's a funny. There's a funny clip of a guy running up to somebody with an energy sword. He's got an energy sword and the guy's got a rocket launcher, and the guy's shooting at him. And the guy's like, he keeps firing blanks because every rocket he fired just would phase through the ground and not explode. <laughs> Blow. <laughs> he, he got the kill. Literally, there was like a period of time where you could not play Halo 2 multiplayer because every every time you fired a rocket, it would just be a blank. That was honestly that was kind of fun. Um, Halo 3 had a really funny glitch where vehicles drove themselves. I still don't even. What? I still. <laughs> I still don't even know how it happened. I don't understand. Like we're talking about glitches where I can't comprehend how that happens. Like. How do you fuck up so badly that you give the it, vehicles their own AI? They were, they were literally driving around on their own. You had ghosts and warthogs just driving around as if someone was controlling them, but there wasn't. As an old RVB nerd, Sheila, is that you? On top of that, MCC games would crash regularly. Lighting would break. Uh, you know, it was it, the basic 343 stuff. How the fuck does lighting break? There, Yeah, like, there'll be moments where people <laughs> will hop into a game and, like, all the Spartans are just, like, complete pitch black. Or that the level would just be complete pitch black, so you're playing in night mode. What? Fa famously, hit, hit registration uh, was still broken. And I've talked extensively about this in my Halo Infinite video. Uh, famously, Dursky, a former Halo Pro turned 343 employee, he lied about it. Yeah. Uh, he had people at 343, his co-workers asking him about it, and he lied about it, saying it wasn't an issue. And then he was caught on stream making fun of somebody bringing this issue up. Um, I'm pretty sure he's still working at 343 to this day. I hope he's not. Uh, he defended that broken hit registration. Basically, what would happen is in Halo 3, if you were clo if you were somewhere near a wall, the, reg the hit registration would just break, and it would give players completely... And I say near a wall. I'm being generous there. There's moments, like a, gr a guy made an awesome video about it, where... Depending on who's host and who's who's connecting to host, uh, there would be a completely different number of shots to headshot somebody, depending on if you were the host. So if you were the host, you had to shoot someone like an extra three times just to win. With the BR? With the BR, yeah. And it I, literally, I was like, what's our standard here? And like, literally, literally people were testing it, and it was consistent too. So it's like, oh wow, okay, this is legit like a problem that needs to be patched. And Dursky went on a live stream and made fun of this guy for pointing this glitch out. And not only was hit registration so broken, it literally lost a team's uh, a team trying to compete in a Halo 3 tournament. There's a famous moment where a guy was about to get a sniper shot off as a guy was stealing the flag, and he was about to win it for his team. And he got a body shot, blood was everywhere, and he, the hit registration just did not go through, and he lost the match. So stuff like that has happened all the Holy time. Holy fuck. Hit registration, and they've, they've kind of patched it. It's still broken. You still play Halo 3. It feels off compared to the 360 version. But yeah, that's what that's what's been happening. And then, in addition to that, I do want to mention this this guy. Um, someone in my comments for my infinite video brought him up, and since learning about him, I I find him so fucking funny. His uh, I, I don't know if I want to say his name. Ba basically, he's a YouTuber who regularly talks about Halo Infinite content. Um, so okay. Infinite will they'll add in a coding, and he'll make a whole video about like how amazing this coding is. He's like, guys. He's also Australian. That's actually important to the story. Um, honestly, that probably just reveals who I'm talking about now. <laughs> he uh, he goes, he's like, guys, they added this new armor to Halo Infinite, and I think it looks pretty good. Or one at one uh, video, he's like, guys, 343 announced that they're listening to us with our feedback, and they're going to fix the game soon. He makes a video every day. He's one of those like content creators who got stuck in the year 2009 and never left. Or they just got hyper-walled into their niche and they can't break out. <laughs> what people pointed out, what's funny and kind of sad about his content, 
is that he constantly talks about how much he loves Halo Infinite, but then he regularly talks about how hard it is for him to find a match because he's based in Australia. And since Halo Infinite probably has some other fucked up unseen matchmaking issue, he's unable to find a match unless he's in a party with someone from America. Because they have bad, they have very, Infinite has very bad uh, region, regional matchmaking. So he's stuck, oh, he's God. stuck trying to matchmake to Australian servers, which probably don't even exist On that 300 at this point. ping? Yeah. With that 300 ping, baby? And it's, it's funny, because people always bring it up, like he's talking about, like, how much, he's, how excited he is for Infinite, and then he'll always throw out there. And by the way, I still can't play the game. <laughs> so it's just kind of, I don't know. It's kind of funny. I've, I found some charm with it. Um, I'm about to say, that's a man that's just like, well, maybe if I actually get to play the game, it will be good. But, uh, yeah, that's about it for, uh, for everything funny. Um, hey, 343. Holy fuck. 343 was given massive layoffs. And there's some glass door reviews were leaked. <laughs> and there's like, I, I think the, fun, the so like, there, we've got, we've gotten an insight into what's happening in the company for sure. I was the, mm -hmm. I... We kind of knew about it. I knew about it as far back as like when I was writing my Halo 4 video. We knew that they were, they were contracting their work out to a ton of people. And I mentioned that in my Halo 4 video. And now we have full confirmation that's exactly what they were doing. And they were doing it so much that they literally did not code the game. So 343 well, is... Hold on. They're going through a thing that's called... Do you know? Are you aware of what technical debt is? You program something very badly. And then there's so many bugs in it. But you keep coding on top of that. More oh my and more God. and more. Until... No. Whereas, so instead of fixing those bugs before you add on to it, you just leave the bugs there and it's like, fuck it, we'll come back later. We'll do it later. There, there's a great image of modern internet technology where it shows this amazing pyramid and then like has the left side is this beautifully defined like, you know, elaborate structure and then some guy's mod for Linux in 2. This called Gary's Bunker <laughs> and it hasn't been patched since 2003 and that's holding up the right side. And is that what I'm thinking it is? Then there's an image of a coconut that'll crash the game. Um, oh, fucking TF2? Yeah. <laughs> um, which, by the way, did you hear they're making Counter-Strike 2? No. Yep. I wish I was joking. I'm actually kind of interested. They're bringing well, Counter-Strike to Source 2. I'm, 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 I'm more hype because here's the thing. Valve, we could all shit on Valve for not making a lot of games recently. And, but the truth is, whenever they have made something, it's been quality. And I'm mostly talking about Half-Life Alex. Burke, we're not here to talk about good games. We're here to talk about Halo Infinite. Fair enough. So technical debt, you know what that is. Like, yeah, you know what that is. That's what happened. That's why all their games turn out the way they turn out. Um, they regularly will contract all their work to completely different studios. Um, That's so too they'll, many cooks. They'll, they'll bring in a contractor. He'll work for like a year and then they'll let him go. Because that's how contractors work. You hire a contractor so that you can fire them without dealing with any repercussions. Um, but no one at 343 has actually coded this. This is coded by some guy who no longer works at the company because he was a fucking six-month contractor. And that is why Halo has turned into the way it is. Because 343 probably at this point literally don't know how to code. I'm just going to say it flat out. They do not know how to code their own game because they literally didn't code it. It's not theirs. Uh, anyway, so that's was, that's basically what, what's happened. There's been a lot of funny like insights of people, man, like former employees and current employees just putting Microsoft and 343 on blast. Like, this is what's happening at the studio. You guys fucked it up. This is what's you know this, this you've squandered this talent. Yeah. There was a funny there was a funny uh, glass door review of somebody who said, "I have no idea how you would fix a company that's incompetent." <laughs> Holy shit! And uh, yeah, that's that's what's been happening. That's uh, as of right now, and from a mutual friend of ours, we he kind of talked about uh, what what's happening with the future of Halo. There's talk of a Halo project, a new potential Halo game that is running on Unreal Engine, and the the theory is that it's going to be a Halo Battle Royale. So yippee! As if we couldn't, you know, fuck Halo over anymore. We're now copying Apex and Fortnite. You. You Amazing. really think they just take their losses and just let them have the Master Chief right in Fortnite and make the money on that at this point? What? That'd be easier. Wouldn't it? Burke, Master Chief is already in Fortnite. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm going to go off my old man rocker as like a hyper niche like film critic. I just remember when Battle Royale was a really weird Japanese <laughs> slasher flick. Oh. Uh. Back in my day. Uh, back in my day, games <laughs> shipped complete. You wouldn't have to wait a year. It's, and that's the, that's the most hilarious thing with Halo Infinite. It's over a year the game has been out. We still I feel don't. It's a AAA thing. We still in don't general. have infection. We're getting infection. We know that season three has come out. 
Um, it's awful. With season three, there there's an armor that looks like the Crisis armor. Yeah. And there's basically they've they've looped back to Halo Five armor. They've run out of armor ideas, so they're already going back to like Halo Five shit stuff that would not look out of place in Halo Five. Um, the helmet oh, that looks no. like a boombox. Remember John Halo Burke? This is what he looks like now. Feel old yet? Holy shit! Why the fuck did they get a Yamaha for head? But yeah, that's where Infinite's at right now. It took us so long to get here, and there are still people who are like, the game's gonna be the game's gonna be good at some point. It's gonna be good in the future. It's just, it won't. We know that. We all know that. I've said it before in my Halo Infinite video. I'm done with Infinite. I literally will never install the game ever again. But yeah, that's uh, that's it, Burke. <laughs> you I've, know, I only installed that game just for that one footage, and I have yeah. not looked back. Yeah. Um, that felt so nice when I finished that video and just was able to uninstall Halo Infinite. And I haven't that must installed have been it triumphant. Since. But thank you, Burke, for joining me today on this April Fools. I can't wait to see how angry everybody will be in the comments thinking I would talk more about either about Halo Infinite, maybe even Halo 5. I don't know. This is probably the best that, I'll, that they'll ever get from a Halo, from a proper like Halo 5 review. Thank you everybody for watching. Take care and thank you, Burke. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.